active sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers. Welcome to your timeless romantic soulmate contract uh, reading. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons, fellow earth sign Virgo that I am. Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, president of Drawing the Circle Productions since 1998. 42 years old now. <laughs> Author. 40, no, wait, wait, 24 years old. Oh, strike that. Reverse it. Author of Words of Grace from a Professional Witch. Available on Kindle. There's a link in the description box. Go read the preview. It's dedicated to my mom. Creator on Patreon. Patreon.com slash drawing the circle. I am the Archangel of Lions. Mark Angelo Lions. But you can call me Mal. Hi. And I got a kitty cat head bonk in my ankle. Hey, of course it's Melky or the other two boys don't necessarily like being on camera for some reason. The Taurus does so. A Capricorn, a Taurus, a Virgo. We've got the Earth signs. So if you are new to the channel, a soul contract read is just like reading a contract. We're going to be looking at a, a, a party number one on this side, party number two on this side, and there will be a third a uh, uh, column, a center lane, I like to call it, for the state of the contract, where you are in the contract at the moment. Uh, a little bit of an oil check there. There is an extended for this uh, on Vimeo.com, uh, Vimeo On Demand. Love Vimeo big time. Uh, but of course, uh, I'm also on Patreon, and all of my patrons, regardless of donation level, get access to all of the Extended readings, past, present, and moving on into the future. Click the link if you want to dive in. And there's a whole lot more over there. So, uh, uh, there are tons of links in the description box. Tons, I tell you. Uh, talking about twin flames and soulmates and soul contracts. But the most important one to watch is from Matt Kahn. We will be using his healing mantra deck as the last card down. Hey, ha hey House author, his YouTube channel is revolutionary. Just got to put it out there. In case you haven't checked them out yet, the name of that video is called Soul Contracts, Twin Flames and Soulmates Redefined, as well as there's a preface preface video that I made for these uh, soul contract readings in general. So, uh, I guess that's about it, except to say the standard YouTube deal, right? It's a general read. Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. You're going to have to feel out which one you are, party number one, party number two. Of course, there can be some mirroring and some overlap there, because the bottom line of a soulmate contract regardless of form. Yes, we're looking at the romantic sexual ones, because those are the hardest ones incarnationally to nail, right? Mm, yeah, big time. Family's just different, you know it is. Um, uh, uh, so that we can really help each other heal. That's the foundation. Sorry, skipped a groove there. Like my mom and I are soulmates. We've helped each other heal before I was even born, right? That's that deal. Uh, but the romantic sexual ones are just harder. So uh, check your other signs in case you got more than one iron in the fire. I do <laughs> at any given time, unless I'm, you know, got a ring on my finger I didn't put there. Uh, 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 um, and, uh, you know, get more information. Your sun is going to have a different take on a relationship than your moon. Now, I will say, since I started this reading, there is a bit of cloudy, perhaps with a chance of meatballs going on in the energy field here. So I'm going to really focus on my breath. Stay here now. I recommend you do the same. Focus on both feet on the floor if you can. Stay grounded. Focus on your breath if you will. Because if in particular you... Why do people come to readings? Because they don't know really necessarily what's going on. They want more information, more clarity. So let's make that a point, shall we? Both feet on the floor if you can. Focus on your breath if you will. I will do the best that I can to get you the clarity, guidance, and grace. My beloved Cardinal Earth signs, you 10th housers, you big highest potentials, I love you. <laughs> Please take a nice deep breath. Yes, and before I forget, I'm well aware of what's going on on planet Earth with uh, the Ukraine and Roe versus Wade at the time of this recording. Look at the time, look at the date, right? You can figure out... You manifesting a happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract on planet Earth right now is probably a huge contribution to there being more love on the planet than fear, more uh, peace than pain, etc. So remember, you're helping each other heal through a quantum entanglement, even if you haven't met yet. That's just how it's written. Don't ask me. Don't make me do the math. It just, just is. So uh, let's do this. I think that's enough explanation. Can we get to divination? Yes, shall we? Please take a nice deep breath. 
It's a lot to fucking explain, man. <laughs> That's why I'm a spiritual teacher. Still point. There we go. Using the Caroline Mace archetype cards, I call to the collective pantheons of angels, archangels, goddesses, gods, uh, ascended masters of romantic soulmate contract uh, law, and the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above, eighth chakra and above. I need three of these. One for party number one, one for party number two, and uh, one for state of the contract that we are, will not see here in YouTube land. We will be turning that over first card in the extended on Vimeo and on Patreon. So what do you got for the Sagittarius Collective? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, sign, Happy, Healthy, Wealthy, Wise, Intimate, Sexual, Satisfying, Soulmate, Contract. Give me party number one. Come on down. <laughs> party number two come on down a little jumper there and state of the contract please the clause of the contract this track on the album the chapter in the story the scene in the movie where are they in this uh, Capricorn Collective Sun Moon Rising Venus I'm happy healthy wealthy was intimate sexual satisfying Soulmate contract. <laughs> All right, like I said, I'm not looking at that one. That one's staying right there, I promise. Let's see who's in It's in the title. It's in the title. <gasps> a hedonist and an angel? That sounds like a fun weekend. A hedonist and an angel walk into a bar. <laughs> one has horns, one has wings. <laughs> Let's see who the top is. Uh, I love these two um, uh, archetypes in particular because I have a good dose of both of them. You can have an archetype, a reason, a season, or a lifetime, uh, and they don't cancel each other out. The Hedonist is a member of the Wild Card family of archetypes. There are nine different families, groups, if you will, so you never know how this is going to pop up. This is a lot of fun. I have the archetype dominant. Uh, can you tell? <laughs> Dionysus is anyone? I've got purple hair, and look what I do for a living. Uh, the angel archetype is the divine family archetype, and means messenger of light. So I am an angelic hedonist and a hedonist angel, but unfortunately no planets in Capricorn, but maybe, uh, let's see, this is great. So I'm going to read you the lead, the shadow that's written on here. The, the shadow attribute is what you're helping each other heal. Heal it within yourself, it's helping them heal and vice versa. Uh, the gold, the the light is what you're shooting for, and that's actually kind of sort of the gift that you're bringing to planet Earth, as I said, during this very tumultuous time. Yes, even our romantic relationships can be part of the divine plan. Go fucking figure, right? The uh, hedonist in the shadow, the shadow attribute, pursues pleasure to the detriment of health, indulges at the expense of others. <laughs> Been there, done that, have the burnt t-shirt. Uh, uh, light attribute inspires creative energy to embrace the good things in life, celebrates the, uh, uh, the beauty in life and in yourself. Work. <laughs> Work Dionysus with his thrices. Mm, woof. So, you know, the lead to gold scale on that's going to be different from everybody. Where are you? What a percentage scale of shadow to light. Uh, be uh, being in a contract with an angel, uh, the shadow attribute, acting innocent or angelic to mislead others. <laughs> Been there, done that, have the holy t-shirt. I mean, the ones with the holes in it. Uh, falsely claiming to be in touch with angelic guidance. I think people are going to lean probably to the former more than the latter. Who pretends to be in touch with angelic guidance? Except to some people, not me. All right, uh, the light attribute. This is huge. Helping those in need with no expectation of return. That is a divine power. That is definitely a spiritual power. So uh, remember, hedonist can show up any way. It can be a spiritual hedonist, right? Emotional hedonist, physical hedonist. So what we're going to do, we're going to take five daughters of the moon tarot, because this is the eighth chakra, these two. It's beaming down the program, the lesson, the, the well, you're downloading <laughs> uh, the soul power, alchemizing it from lead to gold. So we're going to look heart, th third eye crown, next four chakras with daughters of the moon, the internal feminine energy. Uh, with the angel, we're going to be using the mythic tarot for the lower three chakras, root, sacrum, solar plexus, more the masculine energy, the physical world, the externals. 
Uh, and uh, in the extended, we're going to flip decks, so you will get the full chakric element dealy, yeah, uh, if you want it. Please take a nice deep breath. I get why the cloudy, <laughs> I get why the foggy, the hypnist and an angel. Ooh. Oh, I wonder what's legal in their state. Please take a nice deep breath. Still point. Oh, this feels good. All right, I call to my goddesses of Earth the sign of Capricorn. Powers of the North, please, for the hedonist archetype in this Capricorn collective sun, moon, rising, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract with this angel. What is their element of fire? What they yearn for? What they burn for? What their heart's desire in this contract? The uh, Justice card, Ma'at. They want something fair and balanced, or they don't want it at all. Now, this is on the inside, right? So what they want has not manifested yet, if they still want it. When it's a major arcana card, heart, throat, throat, eye, crown, it's all four chakras, all four <clears throat> lit out, right? Trying to come into balance. They want balance. They want fairness. Yes, this is also a card of karma, which I don't often talk about, because in the West, the idea of karma being a punishment reward system is ridiculous. It's just not. Go, go, go to the Eastern, and then you look at the West and go, oh, of course, that's, we commodified it. We made it good, good daddy, bad daddy. Uh, no, this is Ma'at weighing the heart against an ostrich feather Egyptian uh, underworld goddess to see whether you have to reincarnate, move on to the next world, or have your soul eaten by a demon. It depends. Translations vary in the Egyptian book of the dead, from what I understand. <laughs> Unable to read it in the original uh, script. Uh, let's see. That's what they want. My goddesses, what have they got in their element of earth? Uh, the fuel to feed the fire and ground and manifest uh, that heart's desire. Okay. The earthquake on the inner. Uh, five of pentacles, yes, can certainly mean feeling ghosted like everybody says on YouTube. But it's the earthquake. This is being shook, right? Earthquakes last a very short amount of time, but depending on Richter scale, intensity, they can be lethal to thousands and thousands of people all at once, if not more, right? So this person is shook. They got to deal with their shooketh nest. They are sh <laughs> thou art shooketh. Uh, uh, there's definitely a change going on inside of them, but there's wisdom in that change, right? It's internal. So what's the element of earth on the outside? Physical, tangible money. What is on the inside? It's about a real shift. Perhaps that they're really learning something here that they may be shook up about. Almost like the, um, the tower card, but minor arcana. Um really it's jarred, right? Triggered is probably another word, but it's real inside. They may not be showing this. Uh, that's why the lower three chakras are kind of key. And that's why I make extendeds, because I got to pay my bills too, right? <laughs> Earth signs. Oh, I'm Virgo. Virgo power. Breathe. Hmm, especially breathe for the element of air, my goddesses. What are they predominantly thinking? And the air that stokes the fire to help them manifest uh, their heart's desire of that justice, that internal really wanting that. And we've got decisions. The Eight of Blades, Hochma, one of the spheres... Um, in the Kabbalistic Tree of Life. I always like to mention that in case people want to go into it. But here we see her depicted as a goddess of desert winds, right? Juggling eight scythes. Uh, well, it really looks more like a bowline. Well, a sickle, a scythe, a pickle on the side. You do you. Uh, so imagine standing in the desert with all this wind blowing around. It's like, okay, all the horizon looks exactly the same, right? So this is definitely somebody who is in a thought pattern place. There might be a bit of looping. Uh, in, uh, Eight of Swords and Rider weight Tarot, of course, we have blindfolded and bound. So there might be, like, that's why they're shut. In their mind, they might be in this place of, what decision do I make? Literally, the word on the card written is decisions. So this is definitely a third eye deal going on here. Some mental stuff 
uh, being adjusted. Let's look at the emotions. My goddesses, please, one card in clarity for the element of water. What does this hedonist feel uh, about this contract with this angel? Ooh, another air card. All right, so heart third, third eye crown there in analysis about what they feel. The two of swords is definitely more about, in my experience as a reader, at least everybody's different. Everybody's got a different nervous system. We all interpret energy differently. Um, but it is one of gathering information and analysis rather than indecision. Because uh, decision is element of fire. To me, that's usually two of wands or two of flames. Here we have two of blades, two fencers right? Strategizing, right? You got to think, okay, but if they do that, I got to do that. But if I do that and they do that, then I do that. We do that, <laughs> especially for Rose. Uh, so emotionally, they're really looking at this from all sides, how they feel about it in particular. Uh, and remember, just because someone's in a process of analysis doesn't mean like they're going to psychoanalysis, right? Just to clear that up. Um, Although, if you get the right therapist, honey, I have the best therapist ever. I don't even say her name on online because she would be way too busy if I did. Uh, speed dial. Uh, let's look at the card of spirit. Breathe. This one's important. Still point. My goddesses of Earth, sign of Capricorn, powers of the North. This is coming through strong. What is the spirit card? The point of view of the soul who incarnated to play the role of this hedonist in this Capricorn collective sun, moon, <sighs> rising, uh, Venus sign, happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract with this angel in this timeless read and we've got burnout well eight of wands eight of flames um certainly you can take that as contemporary burnout you know just like putting out more than you're taking in oh that would make sense if what they want is balance all right if what they want is fairness that could make sense but also you got to think of like the eight of wands right those wands shooting through the air messages of love and fast moving action this might very well be the soul saying there might be a bit of both of that. That uh, a hedonist will usually run and chase after the things that they want here. Perhaps they want to do this in balance so that the soul is saying there's great passion here. But are you running out of fuel? Are you putting out? Are you burning more than you're storing, I guess? You know, pick your language on that. Because remember, uh, pursues pleasure to the detriment of one's health. Yeah, <laughs> Are you with me? All right, interesting. I mean, we only have two major, uh, one major arcana card on this side of the table. So let's check out the the, the angel uh, silver, silver plate. Please take a nice deep breath. Shift, still point. As I call to my gods of earth the sign of capricorn powers of the north same thing five card element spread for the angel in this <laughs> capricorn collective sun moon rising venus sign happy healthy wealthy wise intimate sexual satisfying soulmate contract with this hedonist archetype what is their element of fire that divine messenger divine family archetype power there willing to give help with no expectation of return uh their element of fire what is it that that angel yearns for burns for their heart's desire in this contract uh seven of pentacles they want time to evaluate to really look at the value of what's going on but let's not kid ourselves lower three chakras outside world what's going on physically, right? What's going on in the root chakra, right? In terms of physical manifestation and tribes and all that stuff. Second chakra, right? Like, is there really want to evaluate this? So what I like about that is that that might be what's kind of shaking this one off to get, you know, I don't, I don't know, let's get this into balance. Let's make sure the ledgers line up, so to speak. 
All right, my gods, what is their element of earth to feed the fire ground and manifest their heart's desire? That looks an awful lot like a seven of pentacles. We've got the hierophant, Chiron, the centaur, the kentaur, trainer and teacher of heroes in Greek mythology. Achilles, Jason, Heracles, all the big ones. Uh, I don't think he got a hold of Perseus, though. Had, uh, he had some other help uh, with Athena than through uh, Chiron, the wounded healer. But certainly the Hierophant. All right, the Hierophant, that there are stages of development and growth. No one becomes a Hierophant overnight, right? No one's born an adult. Right? So there is a learning process of growth and something perhaps even formalized here that they have. Well, and if you look at the High Priestess as the feminine, the Hierophant is certainly the divine masculine in that sense. Um... And we've got an angel going on here. This could be someone who is actually a healer and not so terribly afraid of this uh, sort of situation, or at least um, from their perspective, they're willing to help without anything in return, or that's what they're headed towards. And that's hard in a romantic relationship, right? Unless that's really what you're feeling, right? So let's see, what is this angel thinking, please, my gods? The element of air, yes, feeds the fire. Uh, but what are they predominantly thinking about this contract with this hedonist? Yeah, oh! <laughs> Double whammy, same thing. Eight of swords, eight of blades. <laughs> eight of swords, eight of blades. Well, you're of like mind. Uh, blindfolded and bound. You, you really may not know what to do in this situation. I mean, that happens so very rarely. But it's definitely a third eye thing. Now, while this one's going through it on the inside, this one's going through it on the outside. So there may need to be uh, some communication here in some way, shape, or form about the fairness and the healing and really evaluating uh, this. Because you're going to help each other heal, whether you're together or apart, whether you agree or disagree. I don't know, it's weird, but... Quantum, wantum, timey, wimey, wibbly, wobbly, please don't make me do math. Breathe. <sighs> All right, my gods. Element of water. What is this angel archetype feeling? Their element of water. Uh, their, not just their, their, their heart chakra stuff, but, you know, what's the overall vibe here for them in this happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, you know, dealio soulmate contract? With this hedonist, what is their predominant feeling uh, about this contract? At the time of this reading, the devil, that there are pain, there is chains, there are fears, um, and visibly so, right? It's like they see it, uh, and, and uh, this is not saying necessarily that they feel the hedonist is the devil, but there are definitely some fears on both sides here, right? right? This person could be very intimidating, could be. That's why they want to be fair. I mean, they want that. So maybe it hasn't been fair between them before. I mean, who gets that all the time? Uh, so, you know, this is Pan. This is also about the the more animalistic side of uh, romance and passion and sex and all that jazz. And for an angel, I mean, it's interesting. I look at this. By the way, I'm listening to the audiobook of Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman again. I read it in paperback like 20 years ago. And uh, there we have that thing of angels and devils again, right? Angels and demons. A demon is just an angel who's forgotten who they are. It's the lead part of the spectrum. The angel, the gold, right? They're both messengers of a kind, but what's the message? Mm, love or fear, right? Truth or illusion? Pain or peace? There's a huge healing opportunity here. I could feel that. Our highest potential, 10th house, Capricorn. Uh, this definitely has got past life stuff, although, you know, we're going to Oracle Town in the extended big time. We'll see what it says then. Last card on this side. And then we've got what? We've got uh, two Whispers of Love Oracles cards, one for each of y'all, and then the healing mantra, and then it's over to the extended. Please take a nice deep breath. It still feels good, though. My, my gods of uh, Capricorn, what is this important card of a uh, spirit? The point of view, the voice of the soul that has incarnated to play the role 
with the angel archetype in this Capricorn Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying, soulmate contract with this hedonist, which sounds like fun. For this timeless read, we've got the Emperor. The angel is the one who will be in control of this, particularly from a spiritual POV, pigs or vampires, no, point of view. Uh, we are definitely looking at somebody here who's who their soul is saying, you got to take control of this. I got the hierophant going for them already, but it's like you need to be the dominant. Uh, no, dominant, maybe that's not the best word. You need to really take uh, the lightning, the truth in your hand. I mean, Zeus is a god of lightning. Um, and really wield it wisely and well here. It is the combination of all the kings in uh, the court cards. So we're looking at a spirit king here and one who could easily change this situation with a text message. I just get that feeling that because angel, the word angel is ancient Hebrew. It means shining messenger or messenger of light. Google it. Um, sure, more than that, uh, depending from culture and century to century. Uh, this really has a very dominant feel here. I mean, I get it. It makes sense that the angel might have to be the adult in the situation right now, but I got to say, there's a lot of thought going on on this side, right? We've got uh, one, two air cards, one earth card, one fire, no water on this side. Here we've got uh, two major arcana cards, sorry, three major arcana cards, a swords, uh, and a pentacles. So there is water missing from this. <laughs> Capricorn, sun, moon, rising, Venus signs, and cross watchers, and I find that interesting, but then again, we do the flip-flop in the extended. So, let's, uh, let's find out what your higher selves have to say. This side, and then this side. Let's see what, uh, what hits the table from the higher selves. Please take a nice deep breath. I get why it's a fucking cloudy, though. <laughs> Still point. As I call upon the higher selves of all involved, fifth dimension and above eighth chakra, and above what is the whisper of love, the piece of information, inspiration, insight uh, needed for this hedonist and this angel in this Capricorn collective, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus sign. Happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract in progress for the hedonist. Not even going to look at him yet. And for the angel, thank you. That was clean. That felt very, very clean draw of the cards. And perfect. For the hedonist, focus on love. Look for the good attributes in each and every person in your life, which with all is so if that's what the analysis is, not going in for what's wrong, but going in with like, let me really like, how do I love thee? Let me count the ways, Billy. Shakespeare, uh, I think. Uh, uh, focus on love. That totally makes sense because on this side, it's look at your patterns in relationships. It requires inner strength to recognize that you need to change or modify your behavior. So look, emotionally, that devil could be they want to do bad things to them. I mean, it's very bon temps. It's very uh, vampire bill. Uh, that, that might be a real challenge for them. Hence that Eight of uh, Swords, but I gotta tell you, if you're the angel there worried about that, don't worry. Zeus had a lot of fun. <laughs> like, you could do this in a healthy way that's fair and balanced, um, but you're being given the opportunity to actually look at the larger pattern, which is what soulmates do for each other, you know? You say, uh, and you can have a soulmate, a reason, a season, or the rest of your lifetime romantically. We're not in control of that. We're not in control of the script in that way. Uh, but certainly you can look at it and say, well, let me look at, I call it my rogues gallery. <laughs> because it's not much of a hero's journey without, you know, demons, dragons, and villains <laughs> along the path, liars, gamblers, and thieves, and bad boys, which, come on, what do you think I attract? <laughs> well, and women, which is unfair because I'm gay, if you didn't know. Check the batteries in your gaydar. Uh, so this makes total 
total, total sun. This one needs to focus on love, love for themselves, right? Love for all the people in their lives. This one needs to, in a way, focus on their patterns and relationships. Makes sense with all the air. So, with all that air on the table, let's get you a healing mantra here. Something that it doesn't matter which one of these you are. This will be our second card uh, in the center lane, state of the contract. Either one of you work this even a little bit, it's going to help shift, but you get into it, What you, you get out of it what you put into it. Please don't let me see from Still point. As I call upon the uh, Ascended Masters of Romantic Soulmate Contract law, uh, law, I can feel the love here, but then, of course, there is now that edge of Capricorn seriousness uh, here uh, going on because of the overthinking, which isn't uncommon with Earth signs in general, uh, but it can really distort our perceptions about stuff. So hence the analysis over here in Element of Water I like, but the devil over there, there could be some serious shadow work going down there and an angel can do that. So please, what is the perfect healing mantra to help them heal in this Capricorn Collective? Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Sign, Happy, Healthy, Wealthy, Wise, Intimate, Sexual, Satisfying, Soulmate, Contract, uh, for the well-being of all. Processing Grief. My losses prove how deeply I loved. You've both experienced loss, but mind you, I don't know anybody who hasn't. Now, there are four ego wounds, uh, according to Matt Kahn. Uh, abuse, Neglect, codependence and loss right maybe you were abused maybe they were abused maybe you weren't maybe it never touched you that way uh maybe you've been neglected maybe you weren't maybe they weren't maybe somehow you escaped codependent pattern i don't know how they managed that if you grew up in the western civilization i don't know how you avoided that but maybe you did but no one escapes the wounds of loss just uh, micro, macro, I lost my home, right, down to I lost an opportunity to anything, right? But this is about processing grief. These are two people, this is a hedonist and an angel processing grief. Oh, there's the title. Uh, so my losses prove how deeply I loved so whether this is a comeback around and you're going to help each other heal because you lost each other once before, so to speak, or um, perhaps you have both, particularly over the past couple of years at the time of this recording, it's very probable that the majority of um, people watching this video uh, have experienced some serious uh, loss. Right. So processing grief, really take this in. And by the way, I love you. Hang in there. Breathe. Processing grief. My losses prove how deeply I loved. When grief is processed, you are able to notice the maturity you gained, even when losing the people, places, and things that once defined your sense of self. And isn't that just it? Isn't that just it? Right? You're in a relationship. Maybe you change your name, right? Last name, marriage kind of thing, right? I'm a boyfriend. I'm a girlfriend. I'm a this and a that. You've taken on a new identity added something to your personality and then there's loss who am i it's a trap it's a trap uh, uh, um, uh, as you process grief uh you are able to celebrate how deeply you committed to love instead of holding a grudge against those who left or couldn't love you back work so this can actually be about family patternings, too. Uh, this can be about parental stuff that we bring into the romantic arena, completely unconscious of it, although we call each other mommy and daddy, which is fucking weird. I'm getting over it. I know, I look like a daddy. <laughs> oh my god, it's a different deal. Different archetype. Um, and so that is slow and steady wins the race, which is Capricorn. Right, getting to that place where you can really celebrate how deeply you love. I've gotten there. It's quite a peak experience. Talk about top of the mountain. Once grief is fully processed, it can uh, ignite a deeper commitment to love. Absolutely. Uh, you know that your alignment with source is not a matter of what comes or what goes. 
It's determined by how much of yourself you're willing to share. Angel toward a hedonist. That's obvious. This mantra is ideal for uh, opening back up to love. Even if you haven't met yet, right? You, everybody's carrying their baggage. like opening back up to it because of loss. Um, rebuilding trust and addressing heartache. Yeah. You guys are going to help each other heal. Now, I could see this in a friendship relationship as well. And maybe that's part of that. Right? And certainly taking the risk of going from friend to lover. Or as I like to call it, uh, the, well, to, to then afterwards turn lover back into brother in the sense of, you know, we're all brothers and sisters. Because we are all brothers and sisters of spirit, right? There's only one begotten child of the divine. And we're it. <laughs> I don't know what you're waiting to land on the... On the front lawn of the White House, some UFO to save the day. We're fucking it. Embrace it. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to su summarize all of this in a blessing, because I always do. Um, and then uh, we'll chit-chat for a little bit at the end, because I like to say goofy shit at the end, because I know people don't wait till the end, so it's a little bit of a free period for me. And uh, then we're going to uh, hop over to the extended. Very powerful read. Breathe. point as I call upon the collective pantheons of the divine for the Capricorn collective sun moon rising Venus signs and cross watchers watching this video receiving this reading may they be blessed with all that they need in this happy healthy wealthy wise intimate sexual satisfying soulmate contract that the hedonist can be inspired their creative energy embracing the good things in life and celebrating the beauty in themselves because they want that justice they want that fairness they want that balance and that might very well even be psychological balance in their next relationship i can agree with that because inside they're a bit shook and maybe that's a good thing maybe they're having realizations of the wisdom that they didn't realize that they had all along particularly in terms of processing grief to even get that that proves how deeply i loved and that love isn't gone it's just obscured but there is an awful lot of overthinking and overthinking is a sign that your heart's not open thank you matt con you're in my head today as you usually are uh uh but standing in the center of the desert which decision do i make what do i do what do i do what do i do and emotionally emotionally how do i feel what is this what are we gathering information maybe even intuitively gathering information there by the way heart third third eye crown with the soul saying there is going to be fast movement here, but you may be burnt out. Take a nap. Take a vitamin. Take a break. Do you. <laughs> Put down the pipe. <laughs> or a uh, 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 toy of choice. Let's leave it that way. Uh, so that they can focus on love. So that they can really think about, you know, what's wonderful about the people that they have loved in their life, which would, of course, make them cry and make them uncomfortable if they're processing grief to allow that love to be felt. And so that the angel can help those in need with no expectation of uh, return. And they are evaluating that situation, or at least they want to. They want them, like, maybe that is sort of that, if this is the Capricorn, that thing of saying, well, let's see, where can I be of value here? What can I actually do here? Not necessarily, are they worth helping? their angel archetype they're going to help it's just how to do this in the right way and so maybe this is them as the hierophant as the healer as the teacher as well as what's usually the case they are also being healed and being taught how to heal each other but mostly for themselves because again we've got this incredibly rare double whammy element of air in the element of air eight of swords both sides uh so they are of like mind but that like mind is a bit blindfolded and bound caught between a rock and a hard place sort of damned if you do damned if you don't uh and emotionally certainly there are chains that bind break chains of illusion and set all things to right reveal what has been hidden and bring the truth to light but who's going to do that better than an angel light is truth messenger of light messenger of truth to break those chains and so that they can really embody the emperor in their life in that sense of the divine masculine that it's going to really come from them the action on this this one might be a little too burned out a little too shook 
They're focusing on love. This one needs to look at their pattern in relationships so that maybe they're not rescuing like the rescuer. Angels aren't. The rescuer is a different archetype. Healing family. The angel comes in, delivers the message, does the thing, and then disappears. Well, that might be part of this too. It's really hard to be somebody's healer and somebody's lover unless both people are committed to the healing of themselves individually and in the relationship. Go figure. <laughs> Uh, may they be so blessed so that this hedonist can focus on love and this angel can look at their patterns in the relationship while they both individually and collectively help each other process grief, their losses proving how deeply they loved so that their hearts can open, can be vulnerable, can allow what is here to unfold because the universe always has a plan no matter how things appear to be. And may they be blessed with every step, every breath, and all of this, that they help each other heal, consciously and unconsciously, manifesting their happy, healthy, wealthy, wise, intimate, sexual, satisfying soulmate contract into the electromagnetic grids of planet Earth, bringing it one step closer to a paradise planet, because there's too much love and fun going on for war and all that jazz. For the well-being of all and with harm to none as i will it so let it be done so let it be just so it is that was a long reading but it was worth it capricorn i tell you i love capricorns i do i do i do i said i would marry a uh, a capricorn does not say i'm going to i mean never marry again i don't know i'm very happy being uh, the Archangel of Lions, Mark Angelo Lions. So if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. Help the other caps find this read. And if you want more of me, I don't know, if you like, you could subscribe. I'm a lot of fun to follow, apparently. But if you want to go deeper, I'm a full time mystic and professional witch. Go check out my Patreon. There is a link in the description box that's called patreon.com slash drawing the circle. Because again, Archangel Alliance, Mark Angela Alliance, but I don't take myself too seriously, so you can call me Mal. Thank you so oh you remember to make those go away. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is actually feels really good considering the content of processing grief and with a hedonist and an angel. Maybe you guys can make each other laugh as you go. Yeah. So comment if you like. I'm gonna take a break, take a sip of coffee, check my hair in a mirror, and uh, go do the extended. So thank you so much. I love you, Mike Caps. Wishing you the very best in the very blessed of all of this. Now, farewell. And blessed, blessed be.